Welcome to Real Physics. Today I'm talking about dark energy and how the phenomenon is explained by variable speed of light. Variable speed of light was Einstein's very first idea when he thought about general relativity in 1907 and 1911. You might watch this history video and it's also useful if you watch before the Hubble redshift video and the variable speed of light because, uh, well, Robert Dickey uh, provided an alternative explanation of this redshift and, I mean, the entire discussion is based on that. To um, understand the technicalities, I also recommend that you watch the uh, gravity and variable, variable speed of light video. And uh, the best thing is we look uh, at the entire history of cosmology by taking into consideration this variable speed of light approach. So um, the explanation uh, of the Hubble redshift is basically that there is no material expansion, there is no expansion of the universe, just a contraction of length scales. Okay, so the expansion is illusory if you want. Why this? Why do length scales contract? Because um, if you look at the uh, respective formulas, um, you see that uh, the, uh, the length scales, uh, the wavelength of the, of the uh, atoms have to contract. Why? Because the speed of light decreases uh, during the cosmological uh, evolution. And why the speed of light decreases? Well, because uh, masses influence the uh, speed of light, the presence of masses decreases the speed of light, and that's precisely the mechanism also that is responsible for light deflection in general relativity. So we have a consistent picture here, and uh, necessarily uh, you arrive at the conclusion that um, you have these uh, uh, contracting length scales. We live, so to speak, in an entire world of variable scales uh, you might define an abstract time, you see that the, uh, the horizon, that's what we see of the universe, obviously still increases, but the speed of light, which is the rate of this uh, horizon increase, um, becomes slower and correspondingly, uh, yeah, anything else is variable. As I said, the details are in the Hubble video and now if you look at the cosmic evolution, uh, you realize that propagating light has to maintain is its wavelength. And if the general evolution of wavelength is uh, that they, they decrease, of course, light from the past will appear redshifted. And this is the explanation of the cosmic redshift based on variable speed of light which is of course very different from standard cosmology and um, the most important thing uh, for, for this video today is as Dickey said in 1957 matter is on average at rest okay I mean we have little movements uh, orbiting galaxies and so on but on average there is no expansion no motion and um, the, the redshift is just a, a consequence of this increasing uh, uh, size or better say increasing horizon because light still spreads and we see every day more of the universe but there is uh, no material expansion and now I mean if you look now at the entire history of cosmology of course it it started uh, on the wrong track right from the beginning because when Hubble um, uh, observed his uh, redshift he immediately assigned a velocity and uh, that's the, that's the uh, original sin if you want equating the cosmological redshift to an expansion of the universe um, is probably not true and uh, we have a lot of problems of course in the following because once you assume that you uh, you have this expansion 
it's a quite natural idea to say okay this expansion has to be um, slowed down by gravitational attraction and then the question comes up how much and why do we observe it at the observed rate will the universe expand forever which will be an open universe or will the supposed gravitational attraction slow down the um, expansion and eventually lead to a recontraction or a big crunch or people like to call it or is it just in between and, and the observation was no it wasn't either case it's uh, a flat universe yeah you can't decide the question which is very very mysterious if you make up the numbers if you calculate the numbers so this was a big riddle and it was well solved i wouldn't say but uh fixed with a very superficial idea of of uh, so-called inflation uh, this is a sideline i mean it's a nonsensical ideas but I, I like the quote by roger penrose inflation is a fashion high energy physicists visited on cosmology even artworks think their offspring are beautiful and of course the true reason for this observed flatness is uh, Max principle which is inherent in a variable speed of light approach because you might rephrase the question instead of asking why is the kinetic energy in the same order of magnitude as the potential energy you might rephrase the question and say why is g the gravitational constants in the same order of magnitude as c squared times the radius of the universe divided by the mass and the answer is well it simply calculates like this okay uh, this is um, the the gravitational constant uh, as a function of the mass distribution of matter in the universe and as i said it by definition it um, leads to this so-called flatness this is a little historical sideline because i forgot to mention the slide in another video and yeah, all this, I think it's also beautiful, goes back to Einstein's idea of uh, all, or even Mach's idea or Einstein's realization that the entire inertia or mass is a consequence of the presence of all mass, other masses in the universe. And, uh, well, of course you has, have to formulate this. Now, I mean, if you're on the wrong track, I mean, a lot of uh, other problems arise. We have discrepant measurements of the Hubble constant uh, over decades leading to, to huge discrepancies in the age of the universe and uh, so the Nobel laureate Lev Landau mocked cosmologies are often in error but never in doubt and uh, then of course if your measurements become better and better as it was in the 1990s uh, you have another uh, discrepancy and this was a was a wonderful technique and people were able to measure i don't know 1000 or 2000 uh, supernova explosions per year okay and they got the nobel prize for for this and i don't object it, it's a wonderful discovery because the observation of the uh, supernova allowed for an unprecedented precision in distance measurement that you you had new standard candles so to speak because people understood that the brighter a supernova the longer uh, it takes the the explosion and this allowed as i said for uh, more precise distance measurements and then people were uh, putting this data into the diagrams and realized okay um the the uh, slowdown of the expansion is not there okay it should be there because everybody was convinced that there should be gravitational attraction slowing down the the Hubble expansion no it wasn't interestingly uh, the famous astronomer uh, Fritz Zwicky said this a uh, long time ago that there was no uh, evidence for the attraction of galaxies but then people again were uh, putting all these data into their models and and say okay uh, we don't observe the deceleration that we, we postulated and now what to do if we don't observe it there has to be an acceleration that compensates for the non-observed deceleration but this is not a really good approach I mean think first thoroughly 
before you postulate such complicated mechanisms and uh, well there is another problem that arises then people have noted the coincidence problem uh, why has intelligent life evolved right at the moment when the blue tangent hit the origin that means when the acceleration and deceleration seemingly uh, cancelled out over the entire lifespan of the of the universe that means uh, the acceleration postulated and the thought deceleration were on average uh, equal uh, over a long time why we do we see that right now okay and of course the answer is no it's just absent all the time there has never been an acceleration and never uh, been a deceleration of the expansion of the universe because there was no expansion in the first place okay so we don't observe that and uh, by the way there's also very marginal evidence for this um, for this extra acceleration so uh, this came out a couple of years later of course after the Nobel was handed out and uh, there are another uh, couple of tests that uh, show that uh, uh, the, the data is, is compatible with just um, a uh, yeah a seemingly completely unaccelerated uh, universe and uh, well uh, the point is this okay uh, just just to repeat the key message um, if you start from the wrong track if you assume that there is an, an, an expansion okay you of course you have to wonder about if it's decelerated or accelerated if you look at the data but if if the matter is at rest as it is in the dicky variable speed of light cosmology the problem does not arise because it's at rest and there's no reason whatsoever to move or be accelerated in any direction okay it just stays there and the apparent redshift is another consequence of the uh, shortening of length scales as I said this is um, compatible with the tests and of course cosmology will, will um, go on and people will wonder about this anomaly or that anomaly and fix their model of, of dark energy and dark matter and uh, create new uh, free parameters and epicycles and complicate the model but uh, well for my taste it has always been a very superficial idea to just uh, dump Newton's insight from um, from uh, 1687 and uh, all masses attract each other yeah? we, we, for a couple of decades now we believe that's not true even more that was always a superficial idea and uh, yeah I mean uh, I should mention that uh, the, the, the accelerated expansion is a misinterpretation but uh, for this misinterpretation people were inventing all kinds of exotic stuff like um, uh, dark energy or what is dark energy then you have another another hundreds of, of theoretical proposals also all this is not bringing ahead uh, cosmology um, if we, we we must take a new look at the history of cosmology the Hubble redshift is simply a consequence of decreasing C matter in the universe is on average at rest uh, just light spread this is the, the, uh, the growth of the horizon, yeah, but not a material expansion. The expansion itself is illusory due to contracting measuring scales. The universe is flat by definition when we think about, when we apply Mach's principle. And uh, accelerated just means absence of deceleration. Why should there be an acceleration if it doesn't even expand? And you have no need for these exotic postulates such as dark energy you find more of this in my uh, paper uh, uh, more technical liberation in my paper in Anal and Physik, Physik and there is also a paper with my co-worker Jan Preuss and then there is uh, my book Einstein's Lost Key with all aspects of variable speed of light 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and if you are interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.